Now, Yasser Qadi made a statement, the standard narrative as holes, which um, the Muslims jumped on him and he had to retract. Uh, and this caused a crisis for, of faith for some Muslims when he said that. Uh, but before I actually comment on this, we need to find our terms. It's like, what is a narrative? So a narrative is, is a story that explains a model. Um, and a model is a mental construct developed to explain a series of facts and evidence and data. So when all facts, evidence, and data are in absolute agreement, there is a consensus. Uh, so, you know, there, you don't need a narrative as much when there is a consensus. So a consensus can be an absolute consensus despite sectarian differences. So for example, the four or five uh, Sunni legal schools, the two Shia legal schools and the Ibadi legal schools agree upon the obligation of the performing the five daily prayers. So, so this is an absolute consensus. It's consensus of all legal schools, regardless of sect, right? Um, then you can have a consensus within a branch, like for example, all Sunnis agree, or even a consensus within a legal school, you know, all, all Malikis agree. Um, so a consensus occurs when all facts and evidence are in total agreement. So when all facts and evidences are not in total agreement, you get what is called a conflict of evidence. And when there are conflicts of evidence, you get differences of opinion, ikhtilaf. So when there's a difference of opinion, a narrative is formed to explain or support one's explanation or opinion. So when there's a difference or opinion, no model or narrative supports 100% of the data. And if it did, there would be a consensus. So for visualization, let's say one has a set of 10 facts and evidence as data points with some of the evidence conflicting. A scholar will come up with an opinion or narrative to come up with their best explanation of the data. And this is not unique to Islam, this is in science as well. Um, some may explain, some narratives or explanations might explain nine out of 10 facts, but one is missing, one doesn't add up. Some might eight out of 10, just two don't add up. Seven out of 10, however, none explain all 10. And this is why there is a difference of opinion. If a narrative could explain all 10, there would be a consensus. So all narratives where there is a difference of opinion have at least one hole in it, right? So, um, and guess what? The narrative I'm sharing with you today, it will have you know, one or more holes in it too. Um, Yasser Qadi was asked if he was given a blank mushaf, um, which is like the text that the Quran is written on. Um, can you construct the Quran? So then, um, and, you know, he, you know, was apprehensive and understandably so about answering that question. So the 97.5% of agreed upon words, like, yes, no problem. But the 2.5% words where there are differences, like how can you say with certainty how it was written in the original Uthmanic Continental Skeleton? So slide 18, remember I shared earlier um, how the haps has the word huwa in it and the warsh does not have the word huwa in it. And both readings were preserved. The Muslims accepted both. And according to classical Muslim scholarship, both are Quran from God. And this goes for the 20 transitions as well. But if you were gonna rewrite the Uthmanic Continental Skeleton, do you include the huwa or do you not include the huwa? Um, now, Ibn al Jazari has an explanation of this. Um, Ibn al Jazari stated that Uthman had both written um, into the seven copies, depending upon region. So um, I think he said that the Huwa was written for the Syrian regions, um, and the those without Huwa were for the Mecki and Medini regions. Um, and I could. You know, that's going from memory. I could be a little off there. Um, but this this works in a seven copy model, but it doesn't work in the four to five copy model promoted by Ibn Mujahid, right? So like there's no perfect narrative. Um, and it also conflicts the dominant opinion that Uthman reduced all Ahruf to one heart or all, you know, letters to one letter. Um, now I've read you know, people posing these questions after um, 
the Yasser Qadi speech on internet forums. And um, I've seen different ways that people have reacted um, or answers that laymen have tried to give. You know, so for example, someone said that someone said that the questioner who's asking the question doesn't understand the difference between letters of roof and readings kiraat. You know, the problem with that answer, um, it was dismissive, but and I think that the brother who gave the answer was well intentioned. Um, but from a factual standpoint, no one does, right? So as Sayuti narrated, there are over 40 opinions of Islamic scholarship. Now, um, that was in Iqpan, and Iqpan has, was translated into English at least over 15 years ago. So this information is accessible in English. Um, it's not easy to find, and I'm not talking about the print version, um, but I'm talking about like the the lengthier version. Uh, you know, you may be able to still find a copy online somewhere, but it was, you know, much more prevalent, um, you know, 15 years ago, 10 years ago to find the Iqbal. Um, so if the best of the Islamic scholarship cannot come to a conclusion on the issue, it's doubtful that Muslims on Reddit, Quora, or Stack Exchange can. Um, someone said there are only seven recitations, right? But yet Islamic scholarship has accepted 10 recitations and 20 transmissions is canonical. Um, they've accepted, you know, al Jazari's since then. Um, and the problem is that most people receive the lay person's education and are trying to answer questions without referring back to classical scholarship. And the people answering these questions have never read the different transmissions and it's obvious by their answers. And I mean, some people give like English and say, see, there's no difference between them. Like, but no one was talking about like English translations um, from Hafs. They were talking about the, you know, the various transmissions that I shared earlier. And these are difficult questions and people are giving oversimplified answers. Now, some people say they're just accents, um, but sometimes they're entirely different words. And all of the explanations, uh, given by people account for some of the data and neglect other parts of the data. So for example, 4319, um, Quran 4319 has a different, completely different word in house versus divorce. See the next slide. Um, you know, this was highlighted. So in um, Hafs, it says, Aibad or Rahman. Aibad or Rahman. And in Warsh, it says, Ainda or Rahman, right? So Aibad and Ainda are two different words. But if you look at them from the continental skeleton point of view, you can see, right? Like the Ba and the Noon would be written the same way in the Uthmanic continental skeleton. Um, but uh, so this in the Warsh, it's they are with, the most compassionate or with the most merciful. And um, in the Hafs, it says they are the servants um, of the most merciful, they're servants of the most compassionate. Uh, so my advice is you know, for people to learn this from classical sources. And these are just a couple of examples. Now, granted, um, from a Muslim perspective is these meanings complement each other, right? So that um, this is referring to the angels. The angels are both with the most merciful and they are servants of the most merciful. So they're both, you know, add to the meaning um, in this instance. Um, but, you know, you can find others that are, the explanation is much more challenging. Um, so it's much, this is a much deeper and more comprehensive issue than some of the simple explanations that people have given.